Hello everybody, this week is week three of the Crossing the Desert series and we're looking at the importance of the Bible, both to us as individuals but also to us as a church. And when I was thinking about the colours and the stitches and the shapes that I might use to um, to illustrate the Bible, I quickly realised obviously that it isn't the physical object of the Bible that is going into this piece, but what the Bible itself contains, and that's the Word of God. So naturally enough, I went back into my Bible to see what verses I could find that would inspire colours and shapes that uh, could illustrate the Word of God. And quickly I found in 1 Peter 1 25, the word of the Lord endures forever, which is why you can see a big long spiral stitch there. And actually, although you can see the edge of that thread on the right hand side, that's going to continue off to the very end of the piece. Also, thinking of uh, colours, I've found Colossians 3.16, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach one another. Job 23.12 says, I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. Psalm 12.6 says, the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. So that's why you can see the colours here that I've chosen. Um, I've chosen purple colours to go in the background there because we associate uh, purple with wealth and richness. I've used gold threads there um, and done my best with the stitching. I won't say that they're flawless. Um, but you can also see that this spiral is, it goes round and round from the centre outwards and the gold thread is resting on the surface of the backing fabric and is held down by a tiny red stitch. It's called couching stitch. And I've chosen to use a red thread just to um, illustrate the blood of Jesus that was shed for each of us. Um, and it runs from the beginning to the end, just as um, the physical embodiment of Jesus appears in the Bible, in the Gospels, um, but we know he was there right from the beginning of time and will be forever. And then that gold central line running from the top to the bottom is, is a nod really to Hebrews 4.12 that says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. So you can see that that goes right through the centre. Um, also on the piece, um, there's our second stone for our cairn and that's being held down by gold threads and then a spiral of red stitching there. And then from the beginning of the whole scroll to the end, there will be this gold thread again using a couching stitch and holding the red held down by a red thread. So I've really enjoyed this week and um, I hope you do too. And I look forward to sharing next week with um, for the next instalment. Hi, I'm Simon Baker. I'm one of the uh, leadership team at Threshold. It's great to be with you. Stories are very important. It was Anna who reminded us earlier this week in The Morning Bell. I don't know if you heard her story, but her story was a story that made her who she is today because God intervened in Anna's life and she began to understand God as he really was, uh, just unfortunately as her own father passed to eternity. If you missed it, do go back and listen. It's really worth listening to. The experience of that story has moulded Anna's life so that she no longer fears death because she knows God better. She was a person changed by the story. And you know, the people of Israel 
too were moulded and changed by their stories. Uh, the Exodus and the wilderness stories made the people of Israel who they became. They became God's special people, called to be different to the people around them, called out of Egypt, uh, called out of idolatry and slavery. And it was God calling them out that made them who they were. In fact, we still use that word called out very often um, because in the Greek, the, the word, called, word called out is ecclesia and that word is our English word church. So being called out defined the Israelites then and being called out defines us today. We are a called out people, called to be different, called to be his. So these exodus and wilderness stories were really, really important for the Israelites. They gave them identity. Uh, they knew who they were, or more importantly, they knew whose they were because of those stories. And the bookends for this chapter in the life of the people of Israel are at one end the crossing of the Red Sea as they leave Egypt um, and at the other end the crossing of the Jordan River before they enter the Promised Land. In between these two water crossings there are a host of stories about how people learned what God was really like. And knowing what he was really like changed what they really wanted to be like. It changed how they wanted to think and it changed how they wanted to behave. They saw God at work in the stories. They saw what he was like and their lives were changed. So what were these stories that so moulded them and transformed them that they could be called God's people? Well, those that were Red Sea crossing itself that showed them that God was powerful and was for them. There was the time they complained and he provided water from the rock and they learned that he was merciful. There was the story of the manna and the quail showing them that he was their provider who would never ever fail them. We've got too little time today to see how they learned from, for example, a battle with the Amalekites when Moses interceded for them and from the story of the golden calf when things went badly, horribly wrong. Um, God painted shadow pictures of himself for them all along the way as they made the ark that Adam was talking about last week and the tabernacle and they learned about the Sabbath and the sacrificial system and of course they learned about his 10 point plan for happiness carved on stone which we call the Ten Commandments. One of the ways that God taught them at this time as well was with his traffic light system. The pillar of cloud by day and the fire by night. They stopped and started and settled and stepped out in accordance with God's traffic lights and they learned obedience from that. So you see these were stories which made a people and transformed them into his own people. A people remade in his image. The image of God which was lost at the fall in Genesis is painstakingly remade by God in Exodus and beyond, of course. Um, and as we go on reading and rereading these stories, these stories, just as they change them, will go on changing us and remake us in his image. Because as we find out what God is really like, we are changed as well. And today we've got some people with us, some stories of people who have been changed by these stories. Stories from people who today are reading the Bible and finding that its stories bring uh, and its experiences bring power to change us on the inside stories from people who have passed through if you like the red sea and the jordan river and people stories of people who are being at the moment remade 
in God's own image. Let's hear from those people now. Hi. For me, the Bible has been and is still is a real anchor, particularly in times like this with so much going on around us. It's quite an emotional roller coaster, but God can calm that inner storm. Um, and by reading the, his word, he can bring peace when we need it the most. Um, when I when I get back to God and get back to his word, I feel like I'm in like a bub an actual bubble of peace sometimes because I know that this is our truth, this is my anchor. And I know that I don't need to be fearful because God is in control of it all and he knows what he's doing. Um, on a personal level, I've never been the most self-confident, um, but I can read in here uh, and I can read about um, how God sees me. Um, I can have confidence in how much he loves me and he wants me to share that love with others around me. Um, but yeah, I still, I still mess up every day, um, but it says in here that God forgives me. He forgives us when we come to him, um, and I can have confidence that that's the truth. Um, in Psalm 19, it says, the commandments of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Um, and so, yeah, if you need a bit of joy, peace and hope in your life right now, then I would say it's all in here. So all you need to do is open it up and have a read. So when I read this question, I thought about verses in Psalm 119. Your word is a light to my path and a lamp to my feet. And I think it's really important for me to know my Bible, to know my faith, to know sound doctrine, to know who God is, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And one of the best ways that I found of doing that, of increasing my knowledge, is through the community Bible study. But knowledge of God is obviously an immeasurable chasm away from knowing God. And I want to know God. And the Bible tells me that's through accepting him and accepting him on a daily basis, I think. Um, and also allowing his word to work through me, the truth of his word to work through me. And I think Hebrews um, 6 describes that really well, how the word can discern my innermost faults, my innermost intentions. It cuts through me to reveal things about me. But here, I think I need to be careful, careful of myself, because it's very easy to fall into judgment when I have done something wrong, where the Bible tells me I need to go to God with a contrite heart and tell him about that. I say I've really messed up and God says, you've done well, Simon, because you see the central message, isn't it, of the Bible is how much God loves us and how much God loves me. And um, that is the most important thing to give structure to my life, that he has a plan and he loves me. But it also tells me, of course, the Bible, I need to put this love into action myself. And that's a pretty tall order, isn't it? But I try to do that in a small way, I suppose, in my nursing career, to care for others, to love them, to be kind to them, to dress their wounds and show a little bit of that love of God to them. When I was a new Christian, I saw the Bible as being a bit of a historic book, something that was great for helping me understand what happened in history, but not so relevant for me today. And it's only really through my own faith walk, my growth and my deepening relationship with Jesus and my new church family that I learned to discover that this is a living book and it's a guide, a manual to help me through through life. And it's as relevant for me today as it was when it was first written and will be way into the future as far as I can only imagine. I love the way that it helps me deepen my relationship and develops a desire to know Jesus and his will for my life. Lots of you will remember years ago the little what would Jesus do bracelets that folk used to wear and I usually find that I can find the answer to that question in the word. It's a great source of encouragement to me, it brings comfort, guidance and strength particularly in these challenging times and I often see how life today mirrors what I've read about in the Bible and how God's grace is sufficient to carry me through. I found the best way to be like Jesus is to know him and the best way to know him is to study him. Whether that's directly through the word, through prayer, worship, uh, a preach or a small group, I've so often found the answers to questions that help me through day-to-day -day life 
and that's what makes it a living book for me today. I love being able to send encouraging words to, to friends and people that uh, I don't even really know if they've got any um, obvious faith, but they find great encouragement from picking up pictures and words that I've found that have come directly out of the Bible. I uh, often send um, informal little bookmarks, Bible passages for, for ladies at the sanctuary and um, the one that's often one of my favourites and that's helped me most throughout the years is from Psalm 37 and it says, Commit your future to the Lord, trust in him and he will act on your behalf. Wait patiently for the Lord, wait confidently for him. I love the part that says wait confidently because even when I wobble, I know that deep down my confidence is in him and he won't hide good things from me. The Bible is so much more than a book. It is the living, inspired word of God. And therefore, for me, is the reference and basis of all of any importance that I believe. And because it's the living word of God, what I believe bears witness and hopefully fruit in my life. The Bible tells me that God created the heavens and the earth. And I believe that to be true, not just because it is written, but because when I go out, I see and hear God in his creation, in the trees and in the flowers and in the bird song. The Bible also tells me that God loves me, and I believe that to be true, again, not just because it is written, but because day by day, moment by moment, I recognise his love for me in my life. There have been times and many times that I have doubted, not been so sure, when perhaps the presence of God is not so tangible, when maybe his love is not so clear. And at times like that, I choose to believe because it is written. I remember Jesus's word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And because the Bible is living and the basis of what I believe, it therefore has real impact on how I choose to live my life. I want to live according to God's word. But the Bible doesn't contain day by day instructions on what I should do at any moment. Rather, for me, it contains the principles by which I choose to live or want to live. That's why I think it's so important for me to read and hear God's word on a regular basis. David in the Psalm says, I have written your word on my heart that I might not sin against you. So when I'm writing an invoice for one of my customers for work that I've done, look though I might, I will not find in the Bible how much I should charge them. But I will find that it says the Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favour with him. Applied to my invoice, charge fairly and truthfully for the work that you have done. So for me, the Bible is the basis, it's the rock, it's the reference point for all I believe. And it's the principles and even at times the laws by which I am to live my life. I was very blessed to be brought up in a Christian household, so I've heard Bible stories from the word go. I also was able to attend Sunday school, so I heard the stories again and was able to learn new stories. So I grew to have a love of the Bible because it had so much in it for me. Um, I believe that the Bible is God's word and it's meant for each one of us. Um, it says in 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. It makes it personal. It makes it a relationship. Father God wants us to know him more and to have a happy, full and productive life. And I believe that through prayer, studying the Bible and through the Holy Spirit, that's possible. God has given us so much through his son and he still gives us so much. We are so blessed uh, and the Bible has a lot to tell us about God and also how to live our lives. So if we applied what we read in the Bible, our lives would definitely be so much better. I try to live my life according to God's word and I've still got a lot more studying to do. Obviously, I'm not there yet. I find the though that if I study the Bible each day um, and also join others that study the Bible, 
that love God and want to help us know God more, that it, it gets easier. He hasn't promised life will be easy or without difficulties, but we are promised an awesome future in uh, Romans 8, 18 and John three sixteen. If you look at those, you'll find that it's going to be awesome. He's also promised us that he'll help us along the way. Um, another couple of verses, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 and Hebrews 13, 6 are well worth looking at. That was amazing, wasn't it? Uh, I'm joined now by Anne Baker. Here she is, the lovely Anne, known to most of you, I think. Here she is. And um, in a moment, Anne's going to tell us something of her story. But first of all, those stories we've heard, uh, they're the stories of people who've been reading stories. The, pe the stories of people whose lives have been changed by reading stories. The stories. The stories of the people whose lives are being transformed by reading stories, by understanding the stories. And I guess at this point it just remains for us to remind ourselves to join those people as people of the book, people of the stories. Um, and when we look back at the wilderness period, just as Joshua was about to cross the Jordan River and go to the Promised Land, you know, we see he gave Joshua some really direct instructions about the word. Let, let me read that to you. This is um, Joshua uh, chapter 1, verse, um, verse 7 and 8. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left that you may be successful whatever you do. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And Joshua is told to do three things in relation to God's word. He's to meditate on it day and night. He's to be proclaiming it, and he is, don't let it depart from your mouth. Don't let it leave your, don't, don't let it not be in your mouth. And he's to be careful to do everything that's written in it. So the word of God is in our thinking and in our speaking um, and in our doing. In short, the word of God is in every aspect of our lives or should be. It becomes as we read the stories, it becomes part of our consciousness, guiding us in everything. And that's hardly surprising because it was inspired by the Holy Spirit who guides us through life, making a difference to absolutely everything that goes on. So I just wanted to bring Anne in here. Um, and I, I want you to tell us what, what difference did the Bible make in your life? Every difference. Um, so um, basically, um, the, the I got to know the Bible uh, through somebody I met in a disco, actually, in Leicester Square. <laughs> she was South African. A bit edgy. <laughs> and uh, we became friends. And, uh, you know, she would try and tell me about Jesus. But to be perfectly honest, I did not have any interest whatsoever. And then she started sharing Bible verses with me. And it must have been coming up to my final uh, n nurses exams. And uh, I remember she said me, uh, actually, no, it was on the phone. And she said, and she said, uh, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I thought, OK, I must have faith to believe that I would pass my exams, which I did. Um, so Very anyway, so then, um, so the next thing that happened was uh, I was just minding my own business, coming to the end of my uh, student nursing time. And uh, my friend Katie said, Anne, would you like to come to a Bible study in somebody's home? Uh, actually, it was one of the surgeons in the hospital. Would you like to come to the uh, to a Bible study? I said, what? A Bible study? Why would I want to go to a, to do a Bible study? 
And uh, to be perfectly honest, to this day, I had no idea why I said I would go because actually uh, I wasn't terribly confident or, uh, yeah, it, it was a bit scary, the idea of going to somebody's house to do a Bible study. But I went along and actually it was uh, during uh, that time doing Bible study together in this home that I thought, wow, the Bible is amazing. I actually can know, uh, you know, where I'm going when I die, you know, um, and I, you know, don't have to, you know, be, keep doing things so that God is happy with me. And uh, it was just a revelation, really. And um, I just thought, wow, it, you know, because it says in Ephesians, by grace, you have been saved through faith, not by works, as any, lest any man should boast. And I thought, wow, that is such an amazing truth and I just was so excited about it that um, I thought well if this is what it really means um, that I can be sure where I'm going when I die then I really want to follow Jesus for the rest of my life and uh, I remember asking uh, Bernie actually um, uh, I remember asking well, what do I have to do and he said well all you have to do is invite Jesus to come into your life and uh, you know that's what I did I went home and I knelt down and I said Jesus come into my life nothing terribly exciting happened but you know, it was, my life was changed. And then the next thing that happened was uh, I went back to Ireland and I was so excited and uh, to tell my parents, you know, this is what's really happened. You know, I've, uh, you know, I'm reading the Bible and my parents were absolutely horrified. And um, I remember uh, they said, well, they thought I was, uh, you know, going crazy actually. <laughs> and uh, our, I remember my mother saying, look, Anne, if you're going to read that Bible, then really, I don't want you to come home again. And, you know, that was so devastating to me uh, and so horrible because, you know, uh, going home to Ireland was so, so important to me. And I remember at the moment, you know, she said that feeling really totally uh, devastated. Uh, I I remember what we've been studying in Philippines and it said, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how it is to be abased and I know what it is to abound. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and want. I can do all things in him who gives me strength. And just at that moment, God just gave me that courage, um, you know, to just, you know, feel that rejection from my family. And, um, you know, really just to be told not to come home again was just terribly devastating. I was like, oh no. But actually, um, I think really from that moment on, I think God just through his word gave me that courage to, uh, to keep going and to keep trusting. And actually, um, many years later, my parents, they were actually quite happy about me reading the Bible. Uh, but, um, but really, uh, you know, this was my first Bible, by the way. And this is the Bible, which I forgot to mention earlier, that my uh, friend Muriel gave me. Actually, it's the uh, authorized version. I know, very old version, but... Um, um, but yeah, and um, really, uh, I think from that moment when I had to um, tell my parents that I was reading the Bible, you know, I think God just gave me that courage really to trust his word and that he could, I could do whatever he asked me to do, uh, he would, he would actually help me. And I think that, um, you know, for me, uh, reading the Bible is, is really where I come to when, uh, you know, when I need help. Well, I come to it every day, actually. But, uh, you know, because actually it gives me that courage. It gives me that confidence to keep trusting God no matter what. You know, when we were in Peru and coming back here, through all the changes, all the ups and downs, you know, the word of God is really what uh, gives me the courage uh, and the confidence really to 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 trust him not courage in myself because actually i don't have very much courage i don't have very much confidence but actually it's the word of god that gives me the confidence mm. gives me the courage to to keep going no matter what you know and even if your own family you know turns against me actually i'm still going to believe what god says in his word and um yeah, it gives me the confidence. So I don't know if that was what you wanted me to say, Simon. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, 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 so actually what we saw was that the Israelites were the people of the story in the wilderness, the people of the Exodus stories. Um, they learned from what happened to them and we can learn from what's happened to them. And we've seen several people now who are going on with life, learning from these stories people of the stories, people of the book,
people who's, who are obeying that command, which was originally given to Joshua, but really is for all of us, which is to meditate, to think about um, uh, the word, to not let it, to, to, to let it come out of our mouths, to speak out, to proclaim the word and to do the word as well. Um, and that's the way that we're renewed. That's the way we're changed. That's the way that um, God puts back um, that image in us, the image of God, which is, just needs reworking in us. It's faulty, it's broken, but he's reworking it in us through the word of God. And of course, actually, you know, the word of God has one particular focus, doesn't it? Because every bit of the word of God whispers the name of Jesus and draws us to him. Whichever bit you read, whichever part you're reading, it's actually pointing to Jesus um, from beginning right to the end. Um, and the Bible is about Jesus. It's about him. We worship him and the book helps us to worship him better. Let's pray. Jesus, we worship you. We thank you. We thank you that you caused your spirit um, to write scripture. Um, we thank you that we can read it. We thank you that we can retell it. We thank you that we can do it. We thank you that it becomes a part of us. And we pray, Father, that you would help us day by day to have that discipline and that the discipline would turn into a pleasure and the pleasure would turn into joy um, as we find truth in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.